And you are here live here at Cam Cougar Stadium here in Camby. Um, today's broadcast will be Laker broadcast and produced by Trevor Moore. And you have me, Corey Coombe, and my partner, Mitchell McLaughlin, tonight broadcasting the game to you. We'll have a fun one here in Camby, won't we, Mitchell? That's right, Corey. I'm really looking forward to this. Camby has a reasonably good offense here, and the Lakers also have a very excellent defense, so it should be a good matchup going up against one another. Camby has been known for their wing tee offense, which is a very unconventional offense that has seemed to trip up most defenses, but let's see if the LO defense will be up, up for it tonight. Yeah, the Lakers are holding opponents to approximately eight points per game. Greens to kick off for the Lakers. And we're about ready for kickoff here. Lake Oswego elected to kick, so Camby will receive it, but LO will start off with the ball in the second half. And we apologize about the pulls in the way here, fans, but couldn't get the prime spot tonight. But here we go. We're here for opening kickoff. Griffin Graves, number 15, will be kicking it off for the Lakers. Griffin signals to his teammates, and the ball is a short line drive. It's going to bounce its way back to the Turner. Turner fumbles it a little bit. He gets some good blocking, head of steam, but he will be tackled around Camby's 24. Yeah, great tackle there, good coverage on kickoff team. It's what you like to see. You don't want to see the other team getting off to a good start with a good kickoff return. And the Lakers will come out on defense first, and this defense has been great all year for the Lakers. Yeah, Jack Anderson's been a real key player, and. It, the interesting thing will be to see if the corners can tackle today with this wing T offense. Can be reversed to number one on the motion, but he is met after a two or three yard gain by senior linebacker Reed Martin. Yeah, it's going to be a real big battle up front. Battle of the trenches this game. Can be known to like to run the football. LO has a great D line. Should be an interesting matchup. Excuse me, that's Austin Fonts, number 55, senior defensive end on a tackle. The quarterback's going to keep it on this one. He's going to get a pretty good scramble. He's going to get it met around the first down. I think he might be a little short there, Mitchell. That'll be close to call. Let's see what the refs have to say. And the refs do signal third down. So it'll be third down and a very short distance for the Canby Cougars. See, that's a big thing about this offense, though. They use a lot of misdirection. They want to try and fake it, a lot of like the Oregon Ducks do. L.O., three down linemen. Quarterback sneak, and the quarterback's going to get plenty for the first down. That's going to be Camby's first down. First first down of the game, and that's what Camby wants. A good safe play call there on third down. Just pick it up, keep the chains moving. It's what you like to see if you're a Camby Cougar. If you're Camby, you want to keep that LO offense on the sideline as long as possible and make this LO defense tired. Camby in that wing T. Fake handoff to the running back, hands it off to number one on a reverse. He's got a short gain of about four yards. Great. Take it to the Camby 46. 41. Great tackle there by Mitch Lomax, senior linebacker, definitely the leader of this defense. And here are the Camby Cougars again in the wing T, running back in motion. He's going to be met at the line of scrimmage, though. Great stop by Lakers D. And again, Austin Fonts in on the stop. Austin Fonts has been a big key player to this defense so far this year. Yeah, it's a great, it's a great way to stop the run up front. Easiest way to stop the run is to get penetration into the backfield. You don't want to have your linebackers having to make a play, and if it can get past them, you don't want your secondary having to tackle in open space. Can be back in that wing T, one is here to the left. They got a running back in motion, fake handoff. Quarterback's going to keep it on an option. He breaks one tackle, and he's going to get the first down. Finally brought down by Jack Anderson and Austin Fonts. 
But that's going to be a Canby first down into the Lake Oswego territory at the Lake Oswego 46. Yeah, and that's what that misdirection will do to you. You end up on the outside with two guys coming at you on offense with an option look and only one defender, and it's an easy read for the quarterback. Again in motion, he's going to hand it off to the running back this time. Oh, and they fool the defense, and they're going to pick up a first down again. Camby's moving on this drive, and Lake Oswego has not stayed at home. Yeah, the key thing with this offense is you just get that split-second freeze of the linebackers that gives the running back that advantage that allows him to reach the secondary. And a handoff to the running back again. He's going to run into a brick wall after a two-yard gain down to the Lakers, 36. And that's going to be a key thing all night, Corey, is they got to gang tackle. You don't want just one guy going over there and having him miss the tackle and that resulting in a touchdown. You want six, seven, eight guys over there tackling the football, make sure and you wrap up and bring him to the ground. It's going to be second and eight for the Canby Cougars at the Lake Oswego, 36. Again in motion, the quarterback's going to drop back the pass. He's going to throw one almost intercepted by senior safety Jack Anderson, who last year did lead the state in interceptions. Yeah, he's just got a nose for the football, Corey. It's something you can't teach. He just knows where it's going to be, and he makes plays on the football, and that's someone you love to have on defense. Totally agree. Jack Anderson always seems to find the ball when it's in the air. He makes it difficult to pass on this defense. Canby this time is going to go through Sears to the left. They're not in the wing tee this time. Quarterback fakes a screen. He's looking. He finds his receiver after a short gain, and I think he's going to be a yard short. It's going to be fourth and one at the Lake Oswego 25. And I think Canby's electing to go for it on fourth and one. It's going to be fourth and a long one for Canby here. And if you're LO, this is where you need to stop. You do not want to give Canby any momentum here early in the game. Canby three to the right. They're going to throw a screen pass out right. Good blocking, but he's going to get the first down. Once again, Corey, third down, or fourth down, excuse me there. Nice, simple play call to pick up the first down to keep the chains moving and keeping that Laker offense on the sideline. The Laker defense was a little bit confused pre-snap. Another thing Canby I've seen institute into this game today is they're going with the quick snap right out of the huddle. Don't go up to the line. Don't read anything. Just go up and snap the football as quick as you can. Canby in the wing tee. Fake handoff. Hands it off to the number one on the reverse. But he is met after a short gain. And he fights his way for about a four-yard gain. That's a good solid gain there. He looked like he had nothing, but he found a way to fight for some more yards. Yeah, that was a great play right there by Neil Wagner. His job as outside linebacker is to keep contained, force the running back back up the middle into the waiting arms of Mitch Lomax and the other great linebacking core of this Lake Oswego team. But they got to be able to tackle. He did a great job there, and if they can't make that tackle, Lake Oswego is going to struggle all night long. Two running backs to the left, power left. They're going to hand it off. And the running back's going to get a good, he's going to get the first down. He's down to the Lake Oswego five-yard line, and they're in the red zone, and they're attacking. See, what you're seeing right now is a lot of arm tackles, a lot of people tackling up high. That's not how you want to do it. you got to take out their legs, and you got to wrap up, make sure no one else is there, and they can't pick up any more extra yards. This LO defense hasn't given up many points in the first half of all their games, but Canby has seemed to get a drive going. Let's see if they can put some points on the board and get ahead early. Quarterback's going to roll out, run an option left. He's going to break one. He's going to reach across, and the ref calls touchdown. Touchdown, Camby Cougars. With 6.33 in the first quarter, Camby will be up 6-0. It's a great call on the bootleg. You get your quarterback running outside, and that's what you like to do with these running quarterbacks. Get them out into open space and let them make a play, and that's what he did. Canby will go for the extra point to make this a 7-0 game. And the Canby kicker sinks it. LO's down 7-0. And this is very rare for the Lakers. You don't usually see them down. They've been ahead on the scoreboard all year long. And let's see how they'll face this adversity here in Canby. 
Well, you know, Corey, what you want is you just can't let it phase you. You can't, you can't get all riled up about it. You just got to come out and play your game. Yeah, they scored on the opening session, but you got to come back and answer back with a touchdown of your own is what you'd like to see here. This Lake Oswego offense has been a high-powered offense with Justin Rupi in at quarterback and running back J.B. Holmes, who's seen to be unstoppable. And his offensive line has gave him great blocking all year. Not to mention the deep connection that he's had with Connor Griffin consistently all year long. Almost reminiscent of Alex Matthews to Stevie Corey last year. Exactly. With a guy like Connor Griffin at 6'3 and a guy who can just jump out of the gym. He just, it, there's no guy who can defend him. He just will win any jump ball. And so Justin's always got a go-to guy when he's in trouble. And an interesting look here on the kickoff team for the Lakers. They're having two people deep, which is unusual for them, as this year Romello Washington has generally been the only person deep for the Lakers on kickoff, but it also appears that J.B. Holmes is back there with him. And Camby's about ready to kick off. They're going to look and try probably to avoid the returners because Lake Oswego has some, they're going to kick it back. Romello retreating. Mello's going to get it. Romello Washington, he's going to make one guy miss. He's going to hit the sideline. He breaks two, and he's finally met at the 23 after dragging a couple players. He's taken down at the 23. That's a great way to start out the drive. You like to get it out of the red zone, out up near your own end zone, and get it moving forward. Romello Washington actually started as a kick returner last year as a junior, and he was a great key part to that off to that kick special teams game. He just gave him great yards and put that offense in a great field position. And he kept it out of the red zone here, so Lakers will have some solid field position. Lakers in the I formation, full back to the right. Rupi's gonna fake the, fake the handoff, pass out to Mitch Lomax. And Mitch Lomax is gonna catch that at about the Camby 41, 42. And that's a great gain. Justin Rupi with a great play fake and a great pass to the big target in Mitch Lomax. And a great tackle by Cammy there. Mitch Lomax is not an easy person to bring down in the open field. Only took one guy to bring him down there. You won't see that very often. Rupi in the high formation. Two receivers to the left. You got Griffin on the left, pals in the slot. JB Holmes gets some good blocking, high steps of line, defensive linemen. He gets a good solid gain of about six yards on that, and that'll make this a second and four. Once again, this is gonna be key for the Lakers all night long, getting solid yardage on first down. You wanna end up with second and short and third and manageable if it comes to it. And getting good yards on first down is the first step in toward ending up there. Justin Rupi in the shotgun. Connor Griffin isolated on the right. You got Washington, Palarmini, and Anderson to the left. It's going to be a handoff to J.B. Holmes. J.B. Holmes gets some good solid blocking. He's on fight his way. He fumbles it, but picks it back up. But that's going to be a Lake Oswego first down. And Lake Oswego's into Camby territory at Camby's 44. You know, where Senior had a Camby, you're seeing a one safety look with corners isolated on the edges. They're trying to stack the box and stop the run. Should be interesting to see if the Lakers take any deep shots to their big guns in Connor Griffin. Spencer and Anderson back at running back for JB Holmes to give JB Holmes a breather. And they're in the high formation again. Griffin far left, Palomini in the slot. Handoff to Anderson. Anderson's got, got a crease on the outside, but a good tackle from behind after a seven yard pickup. You know, I think Spencer's a great compliment to J.B. Holmes at running back. He's a, much, he's a little more change of pace, got a little bit more speed. J.B.'s got a little bit more toughness and elusiveness, but overall great tandem at running back. And it just seems that that offensive line for L.O. always finds, a, is always able to just get them a hole to run through. Rupi in the I formation, two receivers to the right. Rupi takes a snap, hands off to Spencer Anderson. Anderson's got a hole. And he's gone. They're not going to catch him. He jogs into the end zone. That's a touchdown, Lake Oswego. And it's just a great job by the offensive line to open up a hole like that. I mean, it's not hard to score a touchdown when nobody's able to tackle you. And Spencer Anderson found a hole, and he hit it hard. There was no player that was going to catch him once he went through that hole. Spencer Anderson's one of those rare athletes that just has great speed and strength. And when he's out in open field, he's a hard player to take down, and you're not going to catch him if he's got a step on you. 
Griffin Graves I'm gonna do the extra point it is good and he's gonna knot this game up at seven with 432 here in the first quarter scoring drive of about two minutes for the Lakers so a quick attack there and they find the way to tie this ball game up at seven That's a good job by the Lakers special team coordinators. I mean, they've been having some trouble earlier in the season on their PATs getting blocked, which when you're up 35 points isn't that big of a deal, but when you come down to the big games in the playoffs, you're gonna need that extra point. It's good to see that they've gotten that fixed. And Griffin Graves is actually a soccer player that has helped out the football team with kicking. And it seemed early in the year that he wasn't used to it and he has taken his time up to the ball, but now he's in rhythm. And even though he has an ankle injury, he's fought through and he's doing a great job at kicking. And he's hit some pretty long field goals this year and he's been a key part to that Laker offense. And Graves is gonna kick it off from the Lake Oswego 40. Camby's got two players back, about the 15. Gray's gonna kick this one, that's a good kick. He's gonna go deep and back to the two, he's gonna return this one. Got some good solid blocking, but great, great special teams by the Lakers there, and they're gonna meet him before the 20 yard line. Once again, it applies on special teams too, Corey. Gang tackling, you can't have one guy bringing him down. Better to have eight, nine guys bringing him down. Good job by the special teams to not allow good return. Make Camby have to work for their points. Camby with a running back behind the quarterback and then a running back to the left of the running back. It's a very unusual offense. They have multiple running backs in at once. Washington fights off a blocker, slows down, but running back finds the open hole. He hits it, and that's a good gain. Gain of about 17 there for the Cougars, and that's a first down, and they're just driving. One of the issues the Lakers shouldn't be having is the yak, the yards after contact for the Canby players. You gotta be able to wrap up in the first hit and that's key to being able to bring them down early so they can't pick up extra yards. Canby in the wing tee, running back in motion, hands it off to the other running back right behind the quarterback, but he's gonna be met after a three yard gain. Nice play there by Spencer Anderson working down the line as a defensive end and catching the running back from behind. That's also giving credit to the defensive line for stopping him up front and allowing him to come and get him. Seems like this Canby offense has thrown LO off a little bit. They're running a wing tee that's similar to the Georgia Tech triple option here. Quarterback fake to the running back, hands off to the receiver on the reverse and he's gonna be met for maybe a one yard gain but that was a great, great stop by the Lakers there. Multiple people, Reed Martin, Nick Underwood, Michael Weiss all there in on the tackle. Yeah, great play there in the backfield by Underwood. I like to see linebackers attacking through the middle, trying to get into the backfield. Force Canby to throw the football. That's what you want to make him see. Nick Underwood's one of the few juniors that starts on this Lake Oswego team. And they've just been doing a great, he's just been doing a great job this year. Canby in the shotgun here. They're going to throw to the running back on the flat. Get some good solid blocking, but Lomax is going to chase him down. A yard short of the first down. That's going to be a fourth and one at the Lake Oswego 49. Interesting no call there on the outside by the referee. Looked like I might have seen a hold there. Generally when you get out to the edges, that's where you see most of the holding penalties occur. But ref called, no flag. Canby hurries the line in the wing tee. Ello's got four down linemen this time. Stacked in line and the quarterback sneaks his way across and he's going to get the first down. Another can be first down. This unconventional wing tee is really throwing off the Lake Oswego offense. And with multiple options to hand off to, you better stay home because you don't know where it's going. Well, the key to stopping this offense as a defense is you can't let the hand eye read fool you. You can't. You have to read the lineman, read who's pulling. That's where you got to make your reads to know where the football's going before it goes there. That's the key. Exactly. Really you got to gotta stay home on this offense. 
They're stacking the left side. They're going to toss left, but multiple Lakers there. He cuts back and finds his way towards the first down. Fumble, but the refs rule down. Yeah, that's a great cutback right there. Lakers had good pursuit, but almost over pursuit, which also you can't have, which allows for the cutback, as you saw there. It's almost like the Lakers knew too much, and they guessed the toss, had it read perfectly, but they over pursued and left a cutback lane. That's right. They're really starting to stack the box here on defense. I haven't seen them go with a two-safety look yet, and Jack Anderson is playing much closer to the line of scrimmage than he normally does. He's going to hand it off to the reverse man, and he's going to get the first down. That's another Camby first down. They are driving here, and Camby's into Lake Oswego territory, down to Lake Oswego's 40, 36 actually. They just keep chipping away, three, four yards, three, four yards, three, four yards. That'll get you first downs, and that'll get you in the end zone here with 120 left to play in the first quarter. Camby hasn't passed, passed much, but seems to be working what they're doing right now. Quarterback hands off to the running back, initially met by Reed Martin in the backfield, and then eventually brought down by Nick Underwood after a two-yard gain. Great that's what you need if you're a Laker, a solid, solid stop. Great play there by Martin. I mean, you got to love to see him, but the key thing you like to see there most is him going after the legs. That's where you're going to wrap people up. Tackling high isn't going to help you at all. Running back shake that off like it's no big deal whatsoever. Exactly. Can be in the wing tee. They got a man in motion. Fakes the handoff. He's going to throw out to the flat. And he's going to get a good solid gain. Let's see. I think he might be a yard short, but that's a good gain. See, that's what being able to run the football does. Really opens up the play action. I mean, if you're Lakers, you got to be able to stop the run. you got to be able to stop the run and then force them to pass, and you'll know when they're passing. Get them into passing downs, third and long, fourth and five. That's what you want to see where they can't run the football. Camby's just been running the football and then eventually throwing a – throwing the ball in the flat and getting good solid gains. Fake handoff, Mitch Lomax reads it perfectly, meets the quarterback and he's gonna sack him. The ref does throw a flag and the Lake Oswego sideline does not look happy about that flag. I think this might be a horse collar call on Mitch Lomax, but let's see what the refs say. Well, they might call it because he ripped off his helmet, but he actually didn't touch the face mask. They're calling a face mask penalty, but he actually didn't touch the face mask. He ripped it off from behind, so technically that should not be a face mask call, although safety is a priority here, and that's probably why you saw that call. And that face mask is going to give Camby another first down, and there we are at the end of the first quarter, 7-7. Tied up here, and Camby has the ball in Lake Oswego territory. That face mask penalty is going to move them into the Lake Oswe into the red zone. And you don't want them down there. Lake Oswego needs to get some stops. Yeah, you don't like to see penalties helping an offensive line. They're already moving along pretty good as it is, and you don't want to see them. Help, you don't want to help them out. You can't give them gifts like that. Mitch made a great play about getting into the backfield, but once you're back there, go low. Don't go high. He was too high. That's why you end up grabbing at the face mask. Mitch Lomax timed that snap perfectly. Got right through. No way you were going to block him, but was high and missed the tackle. But that is what you like to see out of the linebackers. You want to see them in the backfield when they're trying to run the football and pass the football for that, that matter. That's been the big part of this defense. That senior linebacker core has been really just phenomenal, sensational, and they have just not allowed teams to run all over them. And Camby's actually done a great job, and not many offenses this year have been able to put in drives like this. Well, I think what you're going to end up, end up having to see here as the game goes on is Jack Anderson's going to have to come up to the line, the line of scrimmage and make some plays on the ball. Romello Washington and Neil Wagner are doing great jobs in keeping it contained, and he's got to do a better job wrapping up. Hand off up the middle of the running back. He's met at the line of scrimmage. Great team tackle, but it looks like Michael Weiss, the senior, in on the tackle. And Michael Weiss has been a great player for this team. Not talked about much, but his hard work has paid off through the years, and he found his, a starting spot on this defense, and it's really 
he's been a big part of this defense. Really has, Corey. Been a great surprise here. Played really well over out of the year. Quarterback up the middle. Just fools the Laker defense. They're expecting a handoff to the right, and he's going to get a solid four-yard gain. Once again, the Lakers don't quite seem ready when Camby's up at the line at the beginning. They're, they're, they're becoming susceptible to that quick snap. you got to be ready at all times with this offense. That's going to make this a third and four at the Lake Oswego eight. This is a big stop for the Lakers. Can be in the wing T. LO with four linebackers, three down linemen. He's going to fake the handoff. Looks in the flat. He's going to scramble. Initially tripped up by Michael Weiss and then met by Austin Fonts. Good hit there by Fonts. That's what you like to see. When the quarterback goes out of the pocket, you want to hit him whenever you can, any time, any way possible. That's you want to make him not want two. to run and not leave the pocket. That's going to be a fourth and two for Camby, and it looks like they're going to call a timeout to think this one over. It's a big call here, fourth and two in Lake Oswego's red zone. Could go up here again. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's a good, it's good timeout. It's a good spot for a timeout. You want to know what you want to get. If you don't get it, you're in okay position as defense as you've got the Lakers backed up inside their own 10. But you'd like to score here, obviously. The Lakers offense is high-powered. Done a great job keeping them off the, fear, off the field. You've shown great ball control, almost like what Stanford does to most teams. Just pound it at you on the ground. Don't let you have the ball. That's, that was one of the big factors in their upset at USC. You know, I couldn't agree. This actually kind of reminds me of an Oregon Stanford matchup. You got the high power Lake Oswego offense that's attacked quickly, and this can be. They know to keep that offense off the field, and they've held the ball, taken their time. But if I'm Camby here, I want to get seven points because this high powered offense, you don't want to, you don't want to let them get a touchdown to get up four. You, if even if you don't get it, you know you're they're way in there back in their territory, and they have to go. 94 yards to get a score. Exactly. Big play here coming up for the Laker defense. And it looks like Camby is going to go for it. Oh, it's a fumbled snap, and Ello's going to recover it. Great play there by Nick Underwood, pouncing Underwood on the football. Devastating for Camby, and the Laker offense comes back out onto the field with 10-24 left to play in the second quarter. That's a big miscue. The quarterback didn't even look like he was ready for the snap, and the center is just ready to go. Yeah, you saw that a couple times last night against the USC-Utah game. Matt Barkley not ready to go with the snap. And so it looks like LO's going to get it at their own nine-yard line. They got to go 91 yards. LO's in the shotgun. Camby's coming out with a two-safety look, really looking like they want to take the pass away. Groupie handoff to Holmes. Holmes gets a good hole. Finds his way down to the Lake Oswego 19. This is going to be a close measurement. It's a good first down play. You like to get away from your own end zone. You want to give your quarterback a little more room to do. You can do some things out of the shotgun now that you couldn't do before because you don't want him ending up in his own end zone and risking a safety. And they're going to call that short. It's going to be second in inches. Rupi in the I formation. Two receivers to the right. Quick handoff to J.B. Holmes. J.B. Holmes has a hole. And he's going to get about a five-yard gain, and that's going to be a Lake Oswego first down. Great kick-out block there by Nick Underwood. Full blacks never really appreciated very much until you notice that they missed their block on the replay. Great block there, and he's the one that leads the way for J.B. Holmes and Spencer Anderson all night long. Rupi gives in the play to the Lakers. He's going to be in the shotgun again. Jack Anderson to the right, Connor Griffin on the left. Rupi is going to take the snap. He's going to hit Jack on the right sideline. And after an eight-yard pass to Jack Anderson, Lake Oswego, second and two. That's a great timing route. We, one of the things you can tell when you have a really good quarterback-receiver combination is when the quarterback's letting the ball go out uh, before he makes his break. Justin Rupi has been a... Since been sensational this year. He's played really well, made great throws, and there's lots of question, was he going to be up to the job? But he's been doing great. Jack Anderson now, quarterback to run a wildcat type look. Anderson has a hole. He's going to break free. He's going to make one, two tacklers miss. He's going to cut back. I don't know if he's going to catch him, but Jack is down into Camby territory. 
and he's going to fight his way down to the Camby one-yard line. Jack Anderson breaks off a huge run there for the Lakers. Great job by Jack Anderson getting into the secondary. That's a big part of running backs. You don't want to go up against linebackers. You want to go up against the little corners where you can outrun them and outmuscle them, and that's what Jack did on that play. One of the things that people won't notice what he did right there before the end of the play, he actually switched the, which hand he was carrying the ball with. You don't want to have the ball on the side you're getting tackled from. He had it in his left hand, saw the defender was coming from that way, switched to his right. Smart play by Jack. And the LO is going to go in a high formation. Justin Rippey doesn't like what he sees. He's going to call a timeout, strategic timeout. Timeout, take us with Smart play. Canby tried to do the same thing down here. They got way into the red zone, then they couldn't punch it in. That's a key part of the game. It's great that you have big plays on offense, but if you can't get it into the end zone, that doesn't mean much. And on that last run by Jack Anderson, what the Lakers did was they put Jack Anderson at quarterback, ran a wildcat-type look with a dual threat in the quarterback. And Jack Anderson, they run that every once in a while to give Rupi a little rest, and Jack Anderson just broke one off found a hole and he hit it hard. He's just an amazing athlete out there. Does everything it seems like. Absolutely. They really started to put that in after Rupi went down a couple weeks ago with an ankle injury and they were sort of out of quarterbacks because of the injuries so they really wanted to find someone that they could just trust with the ball in their hands and Jackson athlete. Athletes make plays. Let them have the ball. See what happens. Exactly. So Lakers are going to come here in their goal line formation with 9.05 here in the second quarter. Lake Oswego at the Camby two-yard line. Rupi sends Underwood in motion. Ref throws a flag. Might be early movement on the offense or they're signaling a legal shift. And it is an early, early movement, full start on the offense. Interesting play call there by the offensive coordinator, sending Underwood in motion. Generally, when you have a motion play as an offensive lineman, you have to stay down in your stance longer, more likely for a false start the longer you have to wait. And now that penalty is going to push them back, and they're going to go to a more dual threat set where now they have Jack Anderson in the Wildcat. Jack Anderson is going to run a power right, and he's going to find his way into the end zone untouched. And the Lakers are going to go up 13-7 here. Great play call there. I like what they did there. Simplified it down after the last play. Tried to get a little fancy with the motion. Overdid it maybe a little bit. Decided just to snap to Jack. Let him do what he does. That penalty pushed them back too far to run a goal line formation. Coach Corey, great play caller. Decided to go to the Wildcat, put Jack Anderson, and let the athlete make his play. Borak on the hold. Gray is going to kick it up, and it's no good wide left. Well, see, that's what you hate to see. Their offensive line gets good protection, can't put it up and in. Might come back to haunt you later in the game. But going back to and putting Anderson at quarterback, I think it's a great call. It almost reminds you of what the Jets kind of do with Tim Tebow. Jack, I'm sure, would love that reference with the Florida Gator, Tim Tebow. <laughs> But, I mean, he does what he does. You, get him in the, you give him the ball, he makes things happen. That's good. It's the Horax family. I'm just thinking of how I'll say it. We want to thank all you viewers here in Laker Broadcasting tonight. We got people from all over, Kate and Marcus Miller and Helena and Aloisi Horak and Kathy Smith in Texas. We thank you Laker fans all around the country. Griffin Graves set to kick off here, two Camby players deep. And Graves kicks it deep. This one's high and deep, but it's going to be returnable. The return man is going to find his way to the sideline, but Neil Wagner on the initial contact and Adrian Kelly 
there on the tackle. Great play there by Neil Wagner. Going back to the going back to the fundamentals. First guy to get there, Neil's the first guy, wraps him up right away. You like to see that if you're a Laker. And can be back in that wing T. Lake Oswego's got got about nine men in the box. They're gonna toss right. Solid blocking, but the Lakers were there at the line of scrimmage to stop it after a one-yard gain. Multiple people there. Spencer Anderson signaling to the Camby sideline, player down. And he he looks like he's in bad shape there. Well, you know it's not good when the other team signals for the coaches to come over and take a look. But going back to the last play, great play there by Romello Washington. Keeping contained, not allowing, not allowing the running back to get outside and allowing the linebackers come make the play. He actually got off his block and made that tackle himself. There's multiple players on the stop. Romello Washington, Chandler Kelly. They're all there and players gonna hop off the field with the help and that doesn't look good. It looks like it's a knee injury. And that's never good. Yeah, not good when you don't see him putting any weight on it as he's coming off the field. We'll hope he's okay. But meanwhile, the Camby offense is still on the field, and the Laker defense has done a pretty good job of stopping him on these last two drives. And it looks like he's off the field and we're ready for play. Can be in the wing tee. Jack Anderson back a little farther than usual. There's gonna be throw out to the right. Chandler Kelly's gonna meet him originally. Right there, no yards after the catch. And that's what you want as a cornerback. If you can't bat the ball away, make sure he's not running after he catches it. Exactly, great tackle in the open field. Lots of time you see one missed tackle by a corner. It's so The pass is so far on the outside that the linebacker is too far away to make a tackle. It goes for a long touchdown when it's only a five yard pass. camby has got a player in motion. Hand off up the middle. Taken down from behind after a three yard game, which is gonna be good enough for the first down. Another Camby first down. I tell you what, Camby's doing a great job of keeping Mitch Lomax out of our mouths. I mean, we haven't called his name, I don't know if we've called him more than once or twice tonight, and once was for a penalty. So they're doing a great, a great job of keeping him out of the backfield. LO's got nine guys in the box. Confusion on the offensive side. And he, the quarterback fumbles after he's met by Austin Fonts and Spencer Anderson. He's out and he's gonna be dragged down at the three yard line. Huge turnover for the Canby Cougars that seem to have something going. Great play there by Spencer Anderson to stay home. Once again, two of the linebackers on, for Lake Oswego were fooled on the play. They were going the wrong way with the running back. Quarterback had the naked blue leg out to the left. Spencer Anderson stayed home. Did a good job of coming down on the ball and swatting it out, picking it up, and giving it a nice return. Puts the Lakers in primo field position. Wouldn't be surprised to see a little fade here to Connor Griffin. He's one-on-one -on -one outside with the corner. Rupee in the shotgun with J.B. Holmes. Rupee's going to hand it off to J.B. Holmes. He's got a hole, and he's going to get into the end zone. That's a Lakers score. That'll make it a 19 to 17 with 7.32 in the second quarter. It's Griffin Gray's gonna look to make up for his last extra point attempt and nail this one. Great job there by J.B. Holmes, just fine in the hole. Almost Michael James-esque, just find that little crease. You only need two, three yards. Just squeeze through it, make sure you fall forward. Falling forward's a big key for being a great running back. You want those extra two yards. That's what the great running backs do for you. Horrock on the hold. Graves up and it is good. It's gonna make it 27, 20 to seven here, 7.32 in the second quarter here in Canby. Ladies and gentlemen, don't forget, at halftime we will have the Canby Ford kick for cash. Find yourself one of the Lady Cougar basketball players and buy your tickets. Well, as great as that quick score was, the bad thing is, is it puts the Laker defense right back on the field. 
I mean, you get tired on defense if you keep having to play it all the time. But it was a great stop by that Laker defense. Awesome Fonts punched it out, and Spencer Anderson was right there to pick it up. Absolutely. Great job by the Laker defense, which you like to see. Once again, much improved from the beginning of the game. They're starting to make the tackles in the backfield rather than five yards down the line of scrimmage. Griffin Graves here to kick off, kick off from the LO 40. And the kick is high. Go to about the Canby 10. He's going to bring it out. He's going to look for the sideline. He's got some good blocking on the sideline. But multiple Lakers are there to eventually take him down at about the Canby 37. Neil Wagner once again on the pursuit, wrapping up and making the tackle. But, I mean, that's on the gunners on the outside, on the far outside. you got to keep contained. You can't let the guy receiving the football get outside of you. Canby in the wing tee. Looking to get something on the board here because they need to get back in this game. Quarterback throws to the running back. Lamella Washington hit him a little late, but the ref's not going to call it. Generally, when the ball goes straight through the receiver's hands like that, they will let you hit him if you're within one step because you have to be prepared to hit him if they do catch it. So they try to keep it fair for both sides. One of the things Camby might want to try and take advantage of is Chandler Kelly on the far side at corner is isolated all alone. Jack Anderson trying to stay in here to help stop the run and stack the box. Chandler doesn't have any help over the top, so if he gets beat deep, it's going to go for a score. Camby in an I formation type set. Toss left. Mello Washington stays home. Force him to cut back inside after. And he's going to find about four yards on that. Coach Corey's furious about something over there. It was a great pursuit and tackle there by number 31, Michael Weiss. Got to love to see that being able to come across from being at the left linebacker position and coming all the way across making the play on the other side. Can be in the wing tee. Quarterback's going to drop back to pass. He attacks Chandler, like you said, but... Quarterback doesn't have the arm strength to get it over there. Well, the other thing was the receiver wasn't looking. You got to make eye contact after you're six yards down the field. You can't let the ball travel that far without you knowing what's going on. You need to know if your quarterback's in trouble and he needs to get rid of it. And the Lakers did a good job of bringing pressure, making the quarterback have to make a quick decision. And Camby's going to have to punt the football back to Lake Oswego with 6.43 left in the first half. That's a four, a four and out. Camby going to punt to Jack Anderson. And it's a Jack, low line drive kick. He's going to call fair catch. Fair the Lake Oswego well. at 22. Smart play by Anderson. I mean, just what you really don't want to have there is a fumble. You're already leading 20 to 7. You're going to get the ball to start the second half. I mean, you're doing pretty well right now. You might as well, if you can get, punch it into the end zone one more time before halftime, that'd be great. Otherwise, just don't fumble. Don't let Canby have any of the momentum that you've clearly taken back. And Rupi and LO is going to go to an I formation, two receivers to the left. Rupi under center. Rupi takes a snap, throws it to Anderson on a little bubble screen. And Anderson will find about five yards on that one. Make this a second and five. Good wrap up there by Canby, but a solid gain on first down for the Lakers. You'll take that all day long. Second and five, you can live with that. That's fine. And I tell you what, I would not want to be a safety or a corner outside with Connor Griffin and Jack Anderson lined up on the same side that I, as I was on. It's a deadly combination over there on one side of the field. Looks like Jack Anderson's coming back in to run some more wild jack. Jack and the Wildcat. Nick Underwood out there to block for him. Jack Anderson's going to spin off one tackler. Makes one tackler miss, and he's going to get the first down. 
That's a great play there by Jack. Good job spin forward for the first down. One thing, one risk you do run with that spin move is you don't know where you're spinning into. You could be spinning into a tackle. Oftentimes, you'll see people fumble because they don't know that someone's going to hit them and they're not ready to brace for it. Rupee's going to go to the shotgun. Three receivers to the right. Connor Griffin isolated on the left. Safety's in the middle because he does not want to give up a deep ball to Connor Griffin. Rupee's going to hand off to J.B. Holmes. J.B. Holmes gets tackled from behind after a one-yard gain. That's a great job by the Cam Camby defensive end coming down the line of scrimmage and making the play in the backfield. Great pursuit by the Canby linebacker from the other side of the field. Finds a way to chase down J.B. Holmes. He's going to make it a second and nine from the Lake Oswego 40 with 5.02 here. Lake Oswego up 20 to seven. Rupi again in the shotgun, three to the right. Griffin on the left. Rupi's gonna drop back to pass. Looks for Griffin in the comeback route and he's gonna be about a yard short of the first down. It's a great timing play. That's the thing about those curls, they're timing plays. Quarterback wants to have the ball out of his hands before the receiver is out of his break. Makes it very difficult for the corners to cover it. With Connor Griffin on that side, He's been able to beat everyone over the top, so that cornerback's about 10 yards off him, so that comeback route's right there wide open. That's right, not to mention the passing attack makes Camby have to play two safeties, which leaves the running game open. J.B. Holmes gets the handoff on third and short. J.B.'s going to fight his way to the 50. Fight his way to the 50, and he's going to get the first down here for Lake Oswego. See, so yeah, that's a smart play right there for J.B. Nothing, nothing there, nothing big. Just get your two yards, get the first down, move the change, and see if you can get a big play on the next one. Lake Oswego in the I formation, power me to the right, Griffin to the left. You got speed on the right side, and then speed and height on the left side. Rupi's going to fake the handoff. He's looking deep. That's a power me. Life. Gets held a little yeah. bit, and Mitch Lomax gets held as well. There's multiple holds on that one, and this can be pass interference on Camby. Yeah, good call by the referee. Clear hole, and you can't grab the jersey as the ball's in the air. Good job by the officials on catching that one. They sent everyone deep there. Mitch Lomax going deep, power me deep, and they had Connor Griffin isolated on the left side. But Camby didn't want to give it up to Connor Griffin, so they sent the safety over to Connor to double team Connor. And Lake Oswego on first down at the Camby, four, Camby 35 in the I formation. Anderson in the backfield. Rupees a handoff to Anderson. Anderson fighting his way. He's going to get about a seven yard gain, make this second and three. It's a great first down run there by Spencer Anderson, but you got to be careful when you're fighting for those extra yards. It's that time where you're just trying to get that one extra yard and you won't quite go down. That's where you fumble. You see most of the fumbles happen. LO's done a great job of securing the ball. Don't They don't turn the ball over that much. That's true. Once again, you see Connor Griffin isolated down here at the bottom of your screen. Rupee toss left to Anderson. Anderson's got some good blocking. He's going to bounce this one outside. Met. He's, he's going to be around, around the first down, but there's a flag. There's a flag at around the 20-yard line downfield, and they're going to call holding on Lake Oswego. Yeah, I think they caught Reed Penny downfield a little bit. You hate to see that penalties. You don't want you don't want to keep shooting yourself in the foot. The Lakers have had a couple of them here tonight, and it's really helped out Camby a lot. Otherwise, the scoreboard might be a little bit different. So that's going to make this a second down and eleven from the Camby thirty-six. Lake Oswego is going to go to the shotgun. Griffin to the left. Washington far right. Anderson and Palermini in the slot. Spencer Anderson at running back. 
Herpes going to take the snap. Quick throw out to Griffin. Griffin stiff arms one, stumbles his way, and he's going to get the first down. He's going to stumble his way across to the Camby 22. I tell you what, great pass and catch, good hot read, seeing the guy coming off the edge, but what you'd love to see is Connor Griffin to tuck that ball away a little bit more. He's a great receiver, but he's a little bit susceptible to the fumble if he's going to stick the ball out there like that. Got to keep it high and tight. You're starting to see Camby come up here with a little bit more press coverage. That might open it up for a little couple more deep balls down the field to Connor Griffin. Ellos in the Wildcat. Anderson at quarterback. Nick Underwood is running back. Nick Underwood out to block for him. Anderson make, makes a couple cuts. Anderson, He's going to get around a six-yard gain. It's been a really effective formation for the Lakers, just to be able to snap it back there to Jack and just have him do what he does and just make some moves. It'll be interesting to see if they ever go with the Tim Tebow play action run fake and pass the ball out of that formation later in the game. It's always going to be there. Rupi in the eye formation, power me to the right, Griffin isolated on the left side, no safety there. Hand off to Holmes, Holmes got some running room. and He's going to be met by the safety, but he's going to have enough for the first down and push the ball down to the Camby 11 yard line. That's a good job all around. Great job by the Camby safety, tackling low. JB Holmes will shake off any arm tackles that are up high or above his waist, and that was a great job going low and stuffing him right there. I mean, I think you can clearly see that LO is winning the battle up front on the offensive line, and that's what you like to see. Plus, they're really controlling the ball now with under a minute remaining in the first half. Ello's looking to tick that clock down all the way. Score with very little time to give Camby no time to score. And they will be receiving the open kickoff of the second half. Griffin isolated on the right side again. Rupi's going to go to the fade route to Griffin in the corner. Perfect ball, but right through Griffin's hands. Uh, that's a catch you'd normally see Connor Griffin make. He's made it routinely. Lake Oswego fans has almost, almost come to expect it out of him. Rupi put a great ball right and led Griffin right in the corner of the end zone. Griffin had, just fighting out of bounds. Almost, I think he had enough room over there, but just dropped it. That's a great call go. Third and short, go for a long one. Now you got to pick up only one yard now to get the first down, give you another three shots at the end zone. Fourth and inches, I formation. Hand off to Underwood at fullback. Underwood's going to find his way to the Canby six, and that's going to be a first and goal. Timeout, Lake Oswego with 37 seconds. It's a great job by the own line. You only need a yard. Just make sure you hit your guy, get him down the line, uh, down the field one yard, and make sure you pick up that first down. Good job by Underwood. And it seems that Lake Oswego isn't going to use. Oh, yeah, they're going to use that timeout. They want to stop the clock, give them enough time to score here. That's a smart play. Yeah, the, once, once the ball's ready for play, ref signal's ready for play, it'd still be clock start getting rolling and you don't want to see them have to speed up any kind of tempo and possibly make a mistake because they're having to go too fast because they're fighting the clock. Smart play by Coach Corey. Coach Corey's been a, he's a well-deserved coach. He, you know, he's won, he won the state championship last year, but it seems almost that every year he's been in the state championship and yes, he has had the talent, but he's, it's, he's one of those coaches that the players just want to play for. Oh, absolutely. They all, they're all high on him. They all love him. Say he's a great guy. And what's not to like about him? It should be interesting to see if the Lakers go back to the air here or if they try and pound it in on the ground. I'm going to guess that they're going to hand the ball off, maybe run some more time down. Because LO is going to look to try to give Camby the ball with 10 seconds left, not enough time for any drive to get going. I would agree, but I also wouldn't put it past them, just throw it up to Connor Griffin again. I mean, he's a basketball player. He has some serious hops, and just throw it up there, let him go get Anderson it. Anderson in the Wildcat, run right. Anderson's got some blocking. Pulled down by the jersey at about the three, three or four yard line. That's a good job by the Camby. 
defense. We've talked about how great the LO defense has been doing at keeping contained. That was a good job by the Canby defense. That's going to be a Lake Oswego timeout. Their second of the half. Lake Oswego has the ball at the Canby four yard line. Second down, 25 seconds. Lake Oswego has the 22-7 lead. Lake Oswego, they looked, they looked like they're in trouble early in the first quarter, but a couple defensive stops and a turnover. Two fumbles actually from Canby seem to put LO up 13. I think the big one, the big turning point in the game so far was the fumble can be had near down there, the LO goal line. They were threatening to score and they just couldn't punch it in on fourth down and they lost it. Rupee in the I formation. Griffin isolated on the left. He's gonna throw the fade route to Romello Washington. Romello, Goes Romello up. Washington with a spectacular catch. The guy was all over him and he pulled it down with one hand. Da da da, da da da, sports center. I mean, that's what you like to see at LO. You have all the all the talk about Connor Griffin out on the left okay, side. You forget LO about the other LO receivers are really good too. Washington. I hope someone got that one on film. We got to send that one into Sports Center. <laughs> and Griffin Gray's going to sink the extra point attempt. What a catch by Romello Washington. And as you said, in Mitchell, this Lake Oswego receiving core is unstoppable. And if you're Justin Rupi, you never mind throwing it up to one of your receivers and you're in trouble. I tell you what, Justin gets credit for the touchdown and so does Romello, but let's be real here. Romello's doing all the work on that pass. Justin's just lobbing it up there. Most defense repair on double teaming Connor Griffin because with Connor Griffin, there's no cornerback that can guard him in the state. But then you leave isolated Jack Anderson, Nick Palarmini, and Romello Washington, and Mitch Lomax even. And those are four receivers that could kill you and be a number one receiver on any team in the state of Oregon. That's a, one of the things that make this offense so prolific. There's just so many weapons. You know, coming into the year, there was a little bit of question at quarterback about who they were going to have, whether it was going to be Justin Rupi or Harrison Ramey. Obviously, Justin Rupi's going out now, and Harrison Ramey's dealing with a shoulder sprain. But, I mean, Justin do need admirable job and either one of them could be out there doing what they do right now because they're doing really well but they've got so many weapons around them for their at their disposal. Lake Oswego's gonna kick off and I don't know if you noticed but number 13 Chad Walker's out there. He's been out the last two weeks of the concussion after he got lit up in the Central Catholic game but he's back out there. He's a key part to this special teams. And it's a great kick by Griffin Graves, but it's going to fi finally bounce out at the five, and that's going to be a legal procedure. That's just not what you'd like to see out of your kickoff team. 18 seconds left. You'd really like to avoid giving them the ability to try and throw a Hail Mary. Exactly. That kick's going to cause them to get the ball at about the 40-yard line. And if you're like Oswego, you might as well just kick it off to them. And hopefully, and your special team's been good all night. You can tackle them, and they waste off a couple seconds. First and 10, Candy. Let's see if Camby's going to knee it and run the clock out and just go into halftime down 20 or if they're going to throw up a Hail Mary. Looks like they're just going to run the football out. Happy to be down only 20 after making a couple of mistakes here in the first half that really cost them. Yep, and they're going to run it. He's got a hole. Whew. Almost found room. Got in the second layer. Yeah. Fox going to stop for the first down. Well, the Lakers were playing two safeties deep. They've got Jack Anderson and Jordan Horak right there. They've, for the most part of this game, they've just had Jack back there, and they've had Horak at corner, but now they brought in Nick Phoenix to play corner and bring in a nickel look. And Camby's going to call a timeout. Surprising timeout call there by the Camby Cougars. I mean, they didn't really do much to show that they wanted to throw the ball deep out in that last play, but 11 seconds, they're 
46 yard line at their own 46 yard line I mean anything could happen you'd love to score here really would love if miracles do happen to put the ball in the end zone because the LO is going to be receiving the second half kickoff and their offense has looked unstoppable Camby's gonna come out a shotgun with about 13 seconds left. Got enough time for at least one, maybe two, if they can get down and call a timeout. And the quarterback's gonna throw it deep to the sideline, but throws it out of bounds. Well, that's great that's coverage good. there. You got three oh, Lakers, Nick Bunick. Jordan Horak, Neil Wagner, all around, right there around the football. Not much chance for the Camry receiver. Well, Jordan Horak's been a great safety this year for the Lakers. One of the few juniors, as I, um, as I was saying earlier, on this starting defense. And he's had lots of interceptions this year, which has helped out the secondary. Camby with nine seconds left. Going to hand it off on the reverse. And I think that's going to do it here in the first Third half. Number, so. And the clock will run out. You hear the horn, people. End of the first half. Lake Oswego up 27 to 7. Great first half here by the Lakers. I mean, got off to a little bit of a slow start. Canby offense kind of caught them off guard with all the misdirection, but they made the adjustment. And that's good to see, being able to make in-game adjustments. That's key. And Chip that Kelly likes to make a lot of adjustments at halftime. The ability to do that during the game, that's what makes great teams. And that high-powered offense of Lake Oswego clicking on all cylinders. So they're able to put up 27 in the first half.
good. And Ron told him, I think he has uh, tendonitis with the pelvic tendon. Uh, he's not getting any sleep over it. And we're back here for the second half here at Cougar Stadium. And my apologies to Helena and Eloise Korok. My apologies earlier for the shout out. Shout out, the, shout out to all Laker fans out there all across the country. And thanks for the love on Twitter. You don't have to stop, I really enjoy it. Keep going, please. Thank you. <laughs> well, Elo, we got two minutes, two and a half minutes until the second half. Elo is up 27 to seven, and they've been dominating this game ever since late in the first quarter. Yeah, I think the key thing in the second half is just gonna have to be, don't, don't get complacent. Don't get complacent. You just gotta keep shoving it down on them, and don't let them, don't let them get up. You, you, you'd love to come out and just score another touchdown right away and just put the game away. Because, I mean, 34 to seven, that's a pretty convincing score. Even if you have a couple of miscues in the second half, I'd, you'd still probably see a Laker victory here tonight. Squishiness, really nice factor. <laughs> and we're about a minute away from second half. Lake Oswego up. And a special thanks to the producers of this Laker broadcast, Trevor Moore and Kelsey Talbot. Put together a lovely broadcast here. Absolutely, really enjoyed it being up here in the booth with them. And I want to say thank you to my partner, Mitchell McLaughlin, for filling in for Daniel Verber, who seems to be busy at the moment, and back at home. Well, I've had a great time up here commentating with you, and I look forward to the second half here, Corey. Well, I've just been, I've just, I'm just anxious to see what if they're going to put in the young guns, let some of the younger guys like Mitchell Verberg play with a big commanding lead here in the second half. I mean, I think eventually you'll get to see them. 20 points I don't think is quite a commanding enough lead to start putting in the replacements. You get it up 
over, you get it up over 25, I think you might start seeing some people. Holmes and Washington back deep to receive for Lake Oswego. And the Lakers are set to receive with, once again, two deep, Romello Washington and J.B. Holmes in the back. And it's a short kick. Looks like it's gonna be fielded by Jordan Horak at about the 15. Horak makes, nice makes one miss, and he's down to the 29 of Lake Oswego. Oh, that's a solid return. You might want to see the back man take that and have Horak go block since he, he was catching it on his back foot, but makes a nice play with the ball. Puts the Lakers in good field position up at the 29, maybe almost the 30-yard line. And Lake Oswego is going to take, going to get the ball at their 29. Rupee out in the shotgun, J.B. Holmes to his right. He's got Palermini and Anderson to the right, Griffin to the left. Rupee, hand off to Holmes. Holmes got a hole up the middle. He's going to drive the pile towards the first down, down to the Lake Oswego 38, and he's going to be about a yard short to make this a second and one. Once again, you see JB falling forward. It just gives you that extra two yards. You see backs like LaMichael James, who's now in the NFL. They fall forward at all times. You never see him get pushed back no matter how many guys are tackling him. Justin Rupi's going to come off and Jack Anderson back into the Wildcat. And I like what you said earlier. We're going to start calling this one the Wild Jack. Yeah, it was pretty successful in the first half to see if it continues or if Camby's made some adjustments at halftime. Jack's going to hand this ball off to Nick Underwood this time. Nick Underwood runs over one player but then's pushed out at the Camby 48. You know, I like that play a lot. You're really starting to open up the playbook a little more out of that formation. You're running the zone read right there with Jack and Nick in the backfield, both dynamic runners. You got to like to see that rather than Jack just running straight with the ball. And Nick Underwood's one of those hard-nosed football players. He can block, and he's a great lead blocker for runners. But when he gets the ball, he puts his head down, and he finds a way to get positive yards, and he can turn it into a big game. Absolutely. You love having players like him on your team that are just hard-nosed and do the dirty work for you. Rupi in the shotgun. Rupi takes a snap. Hand off to Holmes. Holmes cuts up. Cuts up field, and he's going to get about a six-yard gain. Take it to the Canby 42. It's going to be second down and four with 10.30 left here in the third quarter. I think this half you're gonna see you're gonna see a little more ball control out of the Lakers. They did they did a good job of it near the second quarter. Not as many big plays or quick drives like you saw in the first half. You want to try and maintain the lead. Justin Rupi in the I formation, power meeting to the right, Griffin to the left. Rupi hands off to Anderson. Anderson spinning, driving the pile, and he's going to go. He's going to get past the first down. That's a Laker first down, and they are driving here, Mitchell. See, the great thing is they haven't had to throw the ball yet, Corey. I mean, it's great. You just got to turn around, hand it off, let your offensive line do what they do, and just pound downfield. And the thing that they'll set up for later is the play action deep ball to Connor Griffin and Nick Palermini. Jackson here at the Wildcat again. Underwood back there with him. And Camby's really pressing up. Connor Griffin's isolated on the left side. Palmini on the right. Jack's going to hand this one off to Underwood. Underwood fights his way. He looked like he was going to stop, but he found a way to gain a yard there. That's tough football right there by Nick Underwood. Looks like they're coming back with Jack again this play. Again, Jack and the Wildcat. Palomine to the right, Griffin to the left. Anderson takes a snap. He's going to fake the handoff. He's going to roll out and pass. Throws it behind the target, Mitch Lomax. But once again, you're starting to see him reaching deeper into what they can do out of that formation. Obviously, Jack Anderson, not a natural quarterback, but you like to have the ball in his hand, see if he can make a play. He is a baseball player. He does know how to throw the football. So see what happens. Let him make a play. And as you said, he's one hell of a baseball player. You know, he's just an athlete in the outfields, got a great arm, and he can hit. He's a multiple-sport athlete, also plays basketball for the LO varsity team. 
Rupee here in the shotgun. JB Holmes tells the center Kyle Peterson. Three receivers to the right, one to the left. Rupee fakes it. Rupee scrambles. Finds Jack Anderson at the first down. And he's going to get a first down. Great play by Justin Rupee to scramble and then find Jack Anderson. That's a great job just to keep the play alive. That's what you want to do as a quarterback. You can't, generally, your pocket presence, you got about three seconds before you got to get rid of the ball. After you have that internal clock, after it expires, you got to make a play, get out of the pocket, and extend the play, allow your receivers to break open from the coverage. That's what he did there, and Jack's able to break open for first down. And that's a great job by the receivers to keep running. Even though the play broke down, they just kept running and finding open space in the coverage. Rupee in the I formation. J.B. Holmes back at running back. Rupee's going to hand off to Holmes. Holmes gets some good solid blocking. He's to make one tackler miss, but he's going to find a nine-yard gain there down to the Camby 16-yard line, and that's going to be second and one with eight. 10 left here in the third quarter. And what you're starting to see out of this Cami defense is it's starting to bring pressure off the outside, but that's leaving the middle vacated. And JB's just filling up those holes and hitting those gaps hard, and Camby is finding them down downfield too fast before JB's able to get there. Rupee in the I formation, full back to the right, two receivers to the left. Rupee handoff to Underwood up the middle. Underwood finding his way and bulldozing into into the side that can be 10. Boy, I tell you what, I would not want to get in front of him. It's like a freight train's coming down on you. I just love the way he runs. He puts his head down. He's not afraid of contact. He's just one of those hard-nosed football players. You do not want to get in the way like you said. And the thing that you love about him is he's such a north and south runner. He doesn't make cuts side to side, doesn't try and beat you outside the lines. He just goes straight at you. And if there's a tackle there, he's going to go through it. Official timeout. Looks like the officials are talking about something. And it seems like the officials are talking to one of the LO players. Rupee goes to the sideline and gets a call from Coach Corey. Rupee in the I formation, receiver to the right, receiver to the left. Might see the Connor Griffin fade here. He's out in Romello, Washington in the first half. And it looks like if Camby Cougar came up to the line, he may have in, gone in the neutral zone, but let's see if there's a movement before that. And yes, it is offsides on Camby, got in the neutral zone. And that's going to move Elo even closer to around the Camby four-yard line. That's a good job by the quarterback, Justin Rupi, of mixing up the snap count. You don't want to let the defensive line and try and tighten up and get in the backfield before you're able to get rid of the ball. Rupi in the I formation under center with Kyle Peterson. Rupi handoff to Anderson. Anderson puts his head down, dives. No signal yet whether it's a touchdown or not. But the ref's going to mark him inches short of the goal line. That's one of those plays where you wish they had review in high school. Absolutely. Really looked like he got in there, but you would hope with three downs to go that the Lakers would be able to pick up about two inches. It's going to be a second in inches with 6.50 here in the third quarter and the clock's ticking. Hello and it's goal line formation. No receivers. I've Full back and a running back back there. Underwood in motion to the left. Hand off to J.B. Holmes, ducks his head down, and I believe that's a touchdown. Lake Oswego. Great job by J.B. there on the second effort. He was met short of the goal line, but was able to keep his legs moving, and that's what allowed him to pick up those two inches and get in for the score. Graves on the kick for the and Griffin Graves will look to kick the extra point attempt as Ello's up 33 to seven. Graves missed an extra point attempt earlier. But Graves is gonna sink this one. Being also careful. 
and he kicks that one right down the middle. Makes this 34 to seven. Lake Oswego with 6.33 left in the third quarter. That's exactly what you want to see out of the Lakers right out of halftime. Great job chewing up the clock. I mean, took almost six minutes off the clock here and Camby hasn't even touched the ball yet here in the second half and they were down 20 coming into the half. 34-7, that's a great score for the Lakers. You like to have it. I mean, probably here in a couple minutes you might start seeing some of the younger guys get a chance to play. LO's been dominating this whole game offensively. And you know, I don't even think the Lake Oswego offense has been forced to punt. Lake Oswego, I would believe, has scored on every single drive they've gotten. And Camby's defense just hasn't been that strong. Graves the kick from the Lake Oswego 40. Camby with two guys back to return. Graves and the ball's up and it's deep. That's a good boot from Griffin Graves. Gonna be caught at the two yard line. It's gonna return this one down to the Camby 21. That's a great kick there by Griffin Graves. A little unorthodox, he has been dealing with some ankle issues and interestingly enough, he only kicks with a five yard running start. Most kickers generally go with a 10, but due to some ankle problems that almost allowed Daniel Kelly to come on and be the walk on kicker for a little while. Uh, he, he, he only, he's only able to do it from five yards. The tackle is made by Chad Walker, the key on special teams. Camby at the handoff at the middle. He's finding some room. Romello, Washington, Jack Anderson both take him down, but that is good enough for a Camby first down, and they're going to get the ball at their own 32. And if you're Camby, that's what you like to see. You want to get back to what you're doing well in the first half on that opening drive, and that's running the football. You're running it consistently and you're able to do what you want and that let up in the play action. Don't put too much pressure on your quarterback to make a play. Can be in the I formation. Tight end in motion. He's going to be met at the line, but he's going to fight his way for about a six yard gain. Good job forcing the play up the middle, but once again, the Lakers tackling a little bit high, and you can tell that by the fact that the Camby running back is able to fall forward. If you're low and the low man always wins, he'll go backwards. Camby with a tight end in motion. Hand off to the running back. And a great tackle by Michael Weiss to meet him in the backfield for a no yard gain, but Michael Weiss gets great penetration there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, in the backfield, great play laying out, going for the ankles. If you're, if he's got, if he, even if he's past you, if you hit someone in the ankles, you got a chance to bring him down. If you're going up high for the shoulder plates as he's going by, he's not even gonna feel that as a running back. Goes for the ankles, goes low, wraps up, great play in the backfield by Michael Weiss. It's gonna be a third and three for the Canby Cougars. Tight end in motion, handoff, Quarterback's gonna roll out. He's got multiple people back there, and he's met by multiple people. Romello Washington from the back, and then Jack Quinn and Reed Martin there to help take him down. Once again, great job by Nick Underwood not letting him get outside. The point of that play is to make a bootleg to get out there and try and get your quarterback to the edge so he can break it and get the first down. And it looks like they're gonna go for it here on fourth down in their own territory. It's gonna be a fourth and two for the Cougars. One receiver to the left. Quarterback goes up the middle and he's gonna fight his way for the first down. He's gonna get down to the Camby 47. And that's good enough for a Camby first down. They've, doing, they've been doing a great job in those short yards, just do QB sneak, getting three, four, even five yards sometimes out of that play. The quarterback's been a dual, he's really been able to just run all over the Lake Oswego defense, but they've been able to stack the box because he hasn't, been, he hasn't shown that he's gonna throw the ball downfield. Hand off to the running back. Stuck at the line of scrimmage. And that was Romello Washington going way up over the top to help bring him down. And he's originally met at the line of scrimmage by number 35, Ben Torkelson. And that's what we were talking about earlier with the scoreboard, the way it is, you're gonna start seeing some of those younger players come in and make plays. 
Camby's got second seven here with three minutes and 40 seconds left in the third quarter. Quarterback looks, looks for the receiver in the slant. He threw a great ball there, but the receiver dropped it. Well, that's a great job there by Neil Wagner of dropping back, knowing where his zone is, and knowing where the receiver wants to go. That's really key when you're in a zone. Don't guard his space, guard a man. You want to find out where the quarterback is thinking he's going to throw the ball, read his eyes and make a play on it. That's exactly what he did, and he made a great play. That's going to make this third and about seven okay. at around the 50-yard line, 334 here in the third quarter. They're in the wing T, receiver right. It's a play action pass, quarterback rolling out to his left. He's going to He's going to find his way towards the sideline around the first down. I think he might be a yard or two short. I'll tell you what, that's a great play by Austin Funts. For how big and strong that kid is, it is unbelievable that he is able to move his feet that fast. I mean, he's able to chase down the quarterback from the nose tackle position. That is not something you see every day, folks. Austin Fonts is also one of the top nationally wrestlers. And he's just, he's a guy I wouldn't want to get in a fight with. Absolutely not. It's going to be about fourth and two at the Lake Oswego 45. Camby breaks the huddle. One receiver to the right. I think if the Lakers can stop him here, they could pretty much put the game away with one more good, solid, time consuming drive. Tight end in motion. Quarterback toss right. Good play call. And he's a, oh, he's going to break down the sideline. Ben Torkelson, the last line of defense, will find him. You know, see, that's the issue right there. When you lose contain, the Lakers have been doing a great job all night of keeping contain, keeping all the flow going up the middle to their great linebacking core. Allowed him to get outside that time, and that's why he's able to get outside and pick up the first down. And Camby in that wing tee. Wide receiver to the left. Receiver in motion. Fakes a handoff. Hands off to the reverse man. And Andrew Wren is going to get the tackle after a two-yard gain. The Lakers are doing a much better job this half of not letting the play action fool them and all the hand fakes that the Camby quarterback is doing. Almost every play has one with an option guy that's coming around that the play is not designed for, but it's designed to keep your eyes occupied as a defender. And the quarterbacks that roll out left just short of the first down. And it's going to be third down and a short one for Camby at the Lake Oswego, 11 and a half. Camby in that wing tee, receiver to the left. Two minutes here in the third quarter. Handoff. Nice running, spin move there by the Canby running back. Running back's gonna get a four yard gain, but it almost turned into a catastrophe over there. Mitch Lomax read the count perfectly. He actually tackled the quarterback as he was handing it off. Well, Just there a second earlier, that could be a fumble. That's one of the things about this Canby offense. When you send the guy in motion and you know when the motion is gonna stop, you can time when the quarterback's gonna snap the ball. If it's coming around in the wing tee and you're going to go wishbone, you can time when it's going to happen. Quarterback's got two running backs back. Quarterback up the middle is going to fight his way. He's going to fight his way into the end zone. That was a good song. Stayed up, put his head down, found his way into the end zone for a six-yard touchdown run. It's almost like the Lake of defense, they're waiting to read the play about what is it going to be a toss, is it going to be a read, is it going to be an option? And they keep, they, they're, they're forgetting the fact that Camby still has the ability to just snap the ball and go at them, and they're kind of back on their heels a little bit on the last play, and that's why Camby was able to get into the end zone. And Camby's going to go for two here. Quarterback under center at the three yard line. Set. Fake. Fake two handoff, he's rolling out right. And he's gonna be met short, taken down by Neil Wagner from behind. Great pursuit by Neil Wagner. 
Oh, you know, the Cambie quarterback actually had a receiver in the back of the end zone, but what happens when you get guys coming at you, 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 your eyes stop looking downfield, and it looks like Nick Underwood is still down on the play. He is sitting up. It appears to be some sort of leg injury. Wow, and the fireworks here. Fireworks have been going off like crazy here in Canby. They had a spectacular halftime show as Ron, the trainer, tends to Nick Underwood. Still down on the field. Seems to be in a fair bit of pain. And it, right now he's being helped to his feet, and he looks like he will limp off, but it is under his own power, which is good to see. I would imagine as a starting linebacker, Nick Underwood's night would be done with a comfortable 34 to 13 lead. And the Lakers still have JB and Romello Washington deep, but I would be prepared for a Camby onside kick here. They are down 21 and will be needing the football in order to score. The kicker's going to do a short little pooch kick to Jordan Horrock. And Horrock's going to get a solid return to Lake Oswego 34. That's a good job. If it's not, if you're not the deep man, your job is just to make sure you don't fumble and give your offense the ball back. Lake Oswego has the ball, and you know they've kept most of the starters in so far. Looks like Coach Corey wants to get one more score, and then he's gonna put them in. And I agree with him. 21 points that can go away. Just like that with a turnover and a score. Rupee in the shotgun, two to the right, one, one to the left, handoff to J.B. Holmes. J.B. Holmes had nowhere to go, but finds a way to get two yards. This puts the Lakers in probably their farthest second down situation they've had so far tonight. With 55 seconds remaining in the first half. Rupi in the shotgun, JB to his right. Two receivers to the right. He's gonna throw it to Jack in the bubble screen. Jack cuts up field, good blocking, makes one, two miss, and is dragged down by the shoestrings at the Lake Oswego 48. And you said a great block out there on the edge by Nick Palomini. That's one of the key things to having a great run game is you gotta have your receivers blocked. That's how you have the big plays. You don't let the corners trip them up and you just let your running backs fly through. Another key that people aren't seeing, on those bubble screens, Justin Ruby's doing a great job of hitting Jack Anderson right in the chest so he doesn't have to adjust to the throw and he can stay in stride and stay going full speed. And Justin Ruby makes a great accurate pass and that's what you love as a quarterback. You can dump it off to your receiver, let him do the work. Ruby in the shotgun again, J.B. Holmes back there. Hands off to JB. JB cuts to the right. Solid gain of about three. Holds on the game. Yeah, it looks like Camby's doing a little bit better job getting penetration into the Laker offensive front. And the clock's going to tick down to zero, and that's going to be the end of the third quarter. Lakers up 34 13 here in the third quarter. That's in the third quarter. The score stands, the visiting Lakers 34, Cougars 13. Well, going into the fourth quarter, up 21. I mean, that's what you like to see as a Laker fan, with the ball, driving, see if you can chew up a little bit more time on clock, punch it in the end zone, basically wrap up a victory out here in Canby. And if I'm Coach Corey on this drive, you're gonna take your time. Slow down, clock's on your side. You're, the clock's your friend here, and if I'm Coach Corey, I'm gonna waste as much time as possible and leave no room for a 
Amazing comeback by Camby. Absolutely, and one of the most important things now, you're up 21, you have, you feel confident about being able to win this game. Now the big key becomes keeping players healthy. You don't want to see anyone else get hurt. You saw Underwood earlier, he did look like he was going to be okay, but you just want to get out of here with the victory. You got it. Don't keep everyone healthy. Look forward to the next game. And Lake Oswego comes out. All the starters still in, and Jog. Jack is back in the wild jack with J.B. Holmes to the right. Two receivers to the left, Wagner and Palarmini and Griffin isolated on the right. Anderson, zone read, keeps it himself, gets it stiff arms one and is pushed out at the, four, at the 35. There's a flag in the backfield, but a great run by Jack Anderson, great read. And they are gonna call it back for a hold, which is too bad because it was a great run by Jack. One of the interesting things out of that Wild Jack formation is they do have the ability to run that zone read like the Oregon Ducks do. Sometimes people don't understand is that it's not a read. The play is designed to go to the running back. He doesn't have a choice to hand it off. That time it was his choice whether to read the defensive end, whether he crashes down the line of scrimmage, which would mean that he needs to keep the football as he did and run for a positive gain. Just called back by the holding penalty. You hate to see that holding penalty when you get a great gain there for the first down and you look to keep the ball in their territory, slow it down, and then that holding penalty pushes you back. Absolutely, after this game, I think if you ask Coach Corey, he'd be overall pretty pleased with his team other than the penalty. You can't have, big, you can't have penalties in big games. Those will really slow you down. Rupi in the shotgun with Holmes to his left. Three receivers to the left, I, isolated Connor Griffin. Rupi's gonna fake the handoff. Rupi looks downfield, scrambles, and gets out at about the 45. Well, that's about the first type of pressure that Camby's really gotten on Rupi all day long. I mean, he's, the offensive line has just done a spectacular job of giving him time to throw down to his great receiving core. You hate to see Justin Rupi take a hit because he's been battling a tough ankle sprain. And you see him hobble a little bit after that play, but he's a tough competitor and he's going to stay in that game as long as possible. Definitely a very noticeable limp, but he is he will fight through, I think, you're gonna start, to see, after that play, you'll start to see a few more handoffs here from Coach Corey. Coach Corey's gonna take a timeout. He wants Rupi to take his time and gain some strength. He's probably gonna have the trainer, Ron, look on the ankle. Yeah, once again, going back to the concept, you gotta get out of here healthy. You've basically got the game secured. You just wanna get out of here, look forward to the next game. Harrison Ramey, the backup quarterback, is out dealing with the shoulder sprain, as well as Harrison Reese is out with the concussion. And Zach Parker broke his collarbone. The Lakers are really, their quarterback situation is really diminished after seeming to have a plethora of them throughout the start of the year. Mitchell Verberg actually got some action in last week's game, and I wouldn't be surprised to see him here down near the end as the clock winds down. It's great if you can get Mitchell Mitchell Verberg and let the freshman get some playing time, get some experience. And that's going to help out the program, not only tonight, but help it out in the future as he gains some confidence in Absolutely. playing the varsity game. Especially because in practice, you can take as many snaps as you want. Those aren't game snaps. Game snaps are a whole different thing when the other guys are actually trying to hit you as hard as they can. Generally in practice, quarterbacks are protected, wearing the red jersey, you're not supposed to hit them. Game snaps are the way around. And Rupi's gonna come out in the shotgun. Rupi's not limping as much. He's got two receivers to the left. Wagner at the tight end on the left side. Griffin isolate on the right. The safety's gonna come out, come up. Oh, and he's got Griffin deep. Griffin comes back to the ball. Great play by Connor Griffin. Connor Griffin That's gives the cornerback a little stare. Connor Griffin, he's just a guy you can't stop. And that was just a great job by Justin Rupi, seeing that the Camby was, bring, Camby was bringing pressure and that the class would have been deflected. Good job to bring it down, step side step to the right and give him a throwing lane. Also, great job by Blitz pickup there in the backfield. J.B. Holmes with a great, great pickup block there. But I love how Justin Rupi stayed calm, made a rolled out, and stayed calm, made a great throw to Connor Griffin. Absolutely. Jack back in the wild jack, two receivers to the left, one to the right, Underwood to his right. Anderson is going to hand it off to Underwood this time. Underwood makes one miss. Eventually it takes four Cougars to come bring him down after a two, three yard gain. Make a stop while we 
You know, I like what the Lakers are doing too. They're moving the ball down the field. They're not going for the quick hit play. Prefer to keep your defense off the field. Just keep running the clock. Keep running the football. Work on your offensive line. Work on your stuff. Avoid penalties and get better for the next week. Rupi giving the call. Looks like they're going to go I formation. Anderson and Griffin to the left. Wagner on the right as a tight end. Rupi's going to fake the handoff. He's got Griffin wide open in the end zone, and Justin Rupi delivers a beautiful ball to Griffin in the end zone for a touchdown. That's going to make it 40 to 13, Lakers. And that's what being able to run the football does. The play action freezes the safety. He's thinking he might have to come up to the line of scrimmage and make a play. And he just freezes there, and that allows Connor Griffin with his great speed and length to go right by him. And that power Here's running game three brings three the safety two. up, leaving Connor isolated one-on-one. -on -one. And you already know that matchup's over. Connor Griffin's not going to lose that one. Yeah, absolutely not. He'll win that all day. Connor Griffin one-on-one -on -one is like giving a fat kid cake. Absolutely. It's not coming back. But, you know, some, one of the things that I'm noticing that it would be good to work on is that on, on the PAT team, Griffin Graves seems to be a little bit out of rhythm when, when they're snapping the ball back. He's, he is making the PAT, and it's a good adjustment on his part, but they need to get in the right rhythm. Once again, at 41 to 13 with 9.29 left to go in the fourth quarter, obviously not that big of a deal for the extra point, but when you're playing the powerhouses like Jesuit or Sheldon, you're gonna need those points. And Griffin's been going back and forth between soccer and football, but I don't know about you, but Mitchell, what do you think will be the biggest matchup in the league for the Lakers? Do you think it'll be Lakers or Clackamas? Well, I think Lakers has shown that they have the ability to score the football. They, I mean, they went toe to toe. They got run all over by Thomas Tyner, which got national attention. It was pretty fun to watch, but. They stayed with them in that game. That's why Tyner was able to do what he did to them is because they kept scoring right there with them. And I think if they can put up an offensive performance like that against the Lakers, then they'll have a good chance. Graves going to boot it deep. Camby's in return. Runner's going to head toward the sideline. He's got nothing. He's going to get pushed out at around the 20-yard line. And, you know, I agree with you. You know, Clackmas did beat Lakers, but... Lakers' offense just has so much firepower, and you know it's a battle of the lake. You know, it, there's always an intense, there's always intensity in that game. Oh, absolutely, rivalry games. I mean, anything can happen. I mean, well, aside from Oregon and Oregon State, because Oregon will clearly win this year. But anything can happen in a rivalry game. You bring up interesting point, and I mean, you don't know. Can you just be don't. In, can be in the wing team motion, motions it. Quarterback drops back the pass through three guys, finds a guy after a five-yard pass. But speaking of rivalries, we have Tigard and Tualatin playing right now. Score 34 to zero, Tigard over Tualatin. And it was, it was supposed to be a big game and close one. And you know, all the news stations are gonna cover that one. It's a big game, Tigard's undefeated, Tualatin's been doing well, and so, it's a rivalry there too, and Tiger seemed to run all over Tualatin. Well, Tiger has a great offense. Quarterback throws his receiver the slant, had him, but the receiver heard Jack Anderson come and heard footsteps and got scared. Yeah, and I don't blame him. When you run as a receiver on the outside, you like to stay outside. You're not the big guy. You're the little guy that runs by people and catches the football. When you're asked to run a post route or a six route, which is coming across the middle, and you've got the linebackers and the safety able to come up there and blindside you, you're not looking forward to that. You like the nine routes where you're just going down the field, you're running past the corner, and then you're able to go up and make a play. You don't want to take a huge hit. And can be in that wing tee, one receiver to the left. Quarterback drop back to pass. Looks for a receiver in the flat and throws it way over his head. Leads him way too much. You know, I think that's that's the main thing with this Camby offense. They've got a good running game. They, I mean, they ran all over us on the first drive. We made some adjustments, but they, they can't. They struggle throwing the football. 
They they struggle throwing the football, and if you can't you can't do both, then teams can load up against you. And it does look like Camby's going to have to punt here. And the putt is back deep to Jack Anderson. Jack Anderson's going to be smart and leave this one alone. Yeah, no point in really picking that one up and taking an extra hit when you don't need to at the score of 41 to 13. With eight and a half minutes to go here in the fourth quarter, Lake Oswego getting the ball back. And it does look like there's going to start bringing in some of the younger players. You know, I'm surprised to see they, they're going to keep Justin Rupi in the game, give him one more set. That is a really interesting call. I would think since they should just be handing the, the ball off, Mitchell Verberg might be a viable option here. Also interested, oh, no, see as now, right now, J.B. Holmes is coming out of the game as, as, as he should. Nick Ambaker looks like he's checked in at receiver, as has Karsten Anderson here on the right side. And Tolson there on the carry for a no yard gain, met at the line of scrimmage. Justin Rupi still in there, gives the play call. Carson Anderson far left, Nick Amaker far right. Nick Amaker is one of those guys that has tremendous speed on the outside. Rupi in the I formation is going to hand off to Tolson. Tolson's going to fight his way for a five yard gain on that one. That's a good job by Tolson. Get it back down to third and manageable. You would love to not have to have your defense come back out onto the field. It would probably be mostly reserves, but still. He'd rather just run out the clock right here with a nice drive with seven and a half minutes to go. Tolson, one of the few sophomores, he's getting playing time here because they're up one. But you know, he seems like a really good runner, even though we have plenty of running backs. He's another running back in the mix. Oh, absolutely. Big kid, big strong kid that can come around. Anybody who likes to hit somebody, he's one of those kids you just love to hit people. Anybody who can hit people, they can play football. Hand off to Tolson again. Tolson puts his head down, fights his way forward. Gets a gain of about four, maybe three. And that's going to make it a fourth and one. And I think this might be Elo's first punt unless they decide to go for it. It's going to be fourth and inches. See what Coach Corey wants to do here. And they are going to send the punt team out there. First punt of the day for the Lakers. And you'll see Jack Anderson's going to be back there to punt. And as I said earlier, the kid's a tremendous athlete. He just does everything. He can throw, he can run, he can catch, he can punt. I tell you what, he's great to have back there because in the event of a bad snap, he can make something happen. He's not like the regular punters that aren't very athletic. He's the opposite of that. Jack gets a great punt deep into Canby territory. It's going to go out at about, I'm going to say, a 30-yard line. And that's about where they'll mark it at about. And yep, the 30 yard, yard line. line. Good call there, Corey. All right, and that's where the Cam Cougars will take over with six minutes and change to go here in the fourth quarter with the Lakers leading 41 to 13. And it looks like it's a little too late for a Camby comeback down 28. Camby's just going to run. Seems like the clock will run down. Camby in that wing tee again. Hands off to the right. Runner's got some room up the middle. Gets an eight yard gain there down to the Canby 38. Yeah, and you're starting to see a lot of the backups come in. Kenny Oyama's down there at corner. Andrew Wren, Nick Bunick is in at the other corner. And you know, Canby came in with that wing T and early it gave LO some confusion, but you know, you know, late in the, starting in the second quarter, LO figured it out and they've been stopping it all game. Well, absolutely. As I said earlier, key, 
key in sports is be able to make in-game adjustments. That's who the best players are. They're able to make adjustments. Toss left, and that's going to be good enough for a first down. They're going to get down to about the 45. And, you know, Canby had an opportunity earlier. They stayed with L.O. They got the ball into L.O. territory. Could have gone off 14-7, but a key fumble on fourth and two. And then down there um, in their own territory, they had a drive going, and then they fumbled it, and Spencer Anderson had a huge return and set up an easy touchdown for the Lakers. Well, I think that that's one of the big things. It's just that when you're playing an underdog game, when you're playing against a, a big dog, you you got it. You can't make mistakes because the the the, group, the great teams like Elo they really do capitalize on them almost 100 percent of the time, and that's why they're special. M. The quarterback's gonna drop back to pass. Pass out to the sideline. Miss tackle. The receiver is going to make a couple cuts, makes a couple guys miss, but the ref says he stepped out at the 21. That's what I was talking about earlier. Out on the edge, you got to be able to wrap up after the tackle. Kenny Oyama missed the tackle, and the linebackers, they're still in the middle of the field. They're thinking run, and so they have to run all the way to the sideline. That gives the receiver time to gain yards downfield. And that's going to bring Chad Walker into the game. Yeah, he's the far side at corner, returning from concussion this week. It's good Toss to see right. him back. And the running back makes a couple miss. I think he may have stepped out, but they and yes, they said he stepped out at about the two yard line. Yeah, they are really down. Great effort show on the run. I thought they had him about six yards behind where he ended up. And I know it doesn't matter much, but if you're LO, that cornerback, Chad Walker, you gotta come up and make a tackle. Once you see it's run, you got to get up to that line and help out your defense. Absolutely. Great job reading the right receiver, but also you got to take a look at what's going on, take a peek inside and see that it's a run play so you can come up and make tack a little bit sooner. Can be at the Lake Oswego 2. Tight end in motion. Hand off to the left. The running back's going to walk into the end zone. Barely touched. And so can be. Scores one here against the LO reserves with 450 remaining, making the score 41 to 19, Lake Oswego. Camby will come on and try and attempt the extra point. And the Lakers almost blocked the extra point there. But the kick is up and good, and that will make the score 41 for Lake Oswego and 20 for the Canby Cougars. Michael Scow, number 22, is the guy in there almost able to block the extra point. The Lakers have a 21-point lead with 450 here. And Canby might go for an onside kick, even though there's not much time for comeback. You that know. is true. You always got to be prepared for that. You know, anything could happen when you're at home. Being the home team really helps you out a lot. This is going to be a really good, nice win for the Lakers here on the road. It's tough anywhere you go to go out on the road and bring come home with a victory, no matter what level you're playing at. Canby's taking their time talking something over. You know, they might be playing on side kick. You got to if you're the underdog, you know, if you really want to compete, you got to do everything you can. So Camby is going to be at the 40-yard line. And the Lakers, looks like they have Kenny Oyama and A.J. Van Leeuwen back deep this time. Camby doesn't appear to be lining up in an onside kick formation, although Lake Oswego does seem prepared for it. Lake Oswego's got nine guys up, and Van Leeuwen and those guys start. They do a little pooch kick. Oh. Picked up by. Picked up by Michael Scow, and Michael Scow's gonna not get much. Van Leeuwen. Or Van Leeuwen. Pardon me, Van Leeuwen on the return. I thought it was a 22, not an 82. You know, normally you'd see the refs blow the whistle there a little bit sooner as this Ford progress had been stopped. But the replacement refs did have to go somewhere and appeared they landed here at Canby Stadium. Lake Oswego will take over first and 10 with 442 remaining.
Carson Anderson's out on the right with Nick Amaker at the top of your screen. And Mitchell Verbert is in at quarterback. Verberg's in a handoff for a solid two, three yard gain. Yeah, you'd really like to see the Lakers run out the clock right here. Don't want to send your defense back out there. Get out of here with no injuries. Just keep handing the ball off. Get solid yards. And just go home. Verbers and give them, give them the play. Verberg gonna hand off to number 48, 46. He's gonna sidestep a couple players. That's Max Lakers. Morton, the sophomore, who's gonna sidestep and get find his way for the first down. And you love to see the young guns contributing here. Yeah, that was a nice jump step he had right there in the middle to avoid that one line, middle linebacker coming right at him, pick up a, for the first down, keep the chains moving, keep the clock rolling. That's what you like to see if you're a Laker. The clock's ticking down towards 340 here in the game. L.O. in the I formation, Anderson to the left, Amaker to the right. Verberg under center. And it looks like we may have a delay of game here on the Lakers. Delay of game. And you know, that's a little bit tougher for the players you see here because unlike the college and NFL levels, there's not a play clock down here on the field. You simply have to look at the ref who keeps it on his watch and he will signal when there's 10 seconds remaining. But then after that, it's an internal clock. There's no actual live clock to look you at. You know, for Mitchell the play. Verber is, one, I th if not, I think he's the only freshman on this varsity squad that actually sees the field. Well, it's just due to the plethora of injuries that they've had. Verber hands off for a solid gain of about three. Clocks tick down towards three minutes. Good block there by Mac Tennyson to clear it out for him. Verberg at quarterback in the I formation. Amaker to the left, Anderson to the right. Verberg's gonna toss right. Verberg's gonna toss right to number 26. Daniel Dennis on the run there. Max Morton back in the I formation. Hand off to Morton. Morton not much running room, but he runs over one of the players in the line of scrimmage. That's going to force a fourth down and about eight. Ello's going to punt, but the clock's going to tick down towards a minute 30 left. Coach Corey will take all his time right here. He doesn't need to do anything right now. He might even take a delay of game penalty here. I wouldn't be surprised to let him watch it wind it all the way down and then call a timeout and send the punt team out there. It looks like that's what he's going to do. Where he's got his players huddled over there by him. And he's actually just going to take. Nope, he's going to call a timeout. Delay of game on the offense. Or not, he's going to take a delay of game actually there. 
No worries. Five yards doesn't matter here. Up 21 with a minute 10 left. Jack Anderson going back to punt, and you'll see Chad Walker as the gunner out here on the bottom of your screen. Gunners are generally very important on the punt coverage because they're the first ones that are going to get to the football. Chad Walker beats his guy. He's going to get down. Ball's going to be out at about the 27. Make that 28. With a minute left here in the game, LO up 41 20, and I feel safe to say that this one's over. Timmy Johnson into the game for the Cougars. And Camby should just come out to look and run out the clock here. Oh, fumble on the snap. Quarterback picks it up, scrambles for a little bit, finds a way to gain some yards out of that. McLaughlin ticked down. Maybe enough time for one Johnson more, maybe two more plays. Campbell on the stop for the Lakers. Quarterback fumbles the snap again, and Lake Oswego, I think, recovers this one. L.O. ball, and they'll probably take a knee. 17 seconds left, and this game is over. Yeah, 14 seconds remaining. Good solid win out here in Camby. Always good to win on the road. Go back home next week. Should be a good one. Oh, yeah, it's the Kenny's part, quarterback. Part of me on the call. Kenny Oyama's been in the game in the fourth quarter as Mitchell Verberg is not dressed down for the game. And he will take a knee, and that is your ball game. Final score, Lake Oswego 41, Canby Cougars 20. Ellos offense seemed to overpower the Cougars here in Canby, and they're going to get away with victory. Stay undefeated, 6-0 and Lakers. Ladies and gentlemen, Lakers are going to be happy to get out of here with no injuries, and it looks like Lake Oswego remains undefeated. Solid game, not much to complain about. A couple of penalties they might like to have back, otherwise not a big impact. Good job forcing turnovers on defense. Overall, what you like to see. Again, final score, 41-20, Lake Oswego. Thanks for tuning in to Laker Broadcasting, produced by Trevor Moore and Kelsey Talbot. And this is Mitchell McLaughlin and Corey Coombs signing out on the broadcast. See you guys.